And just like that, we back at the crib. YouTube, team keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And in this video, we got a lot to talk about with Hollywood, with Boykin, uh, and with a little bit of other things too. Um, first and foremost, appreciate y'all. Uh, y'all showed a lot of love, man. Y'all showed a whole lot of love. Uh, it was fun, especially at the open practice, uh, getting to meet a lot of Team Keep It Clean, see a lot of Team Keep It Clean out there, uh, and then even at the harbor, uh, and then even at the airport. So shout out to all of y'all, man. I appreciate y'all. I really love y'all. Um, I don't know the next time we're going to be back up there. Don't know for what game. Just no clue right now. It's all up in the air. Uh, but anyway, uh, somebody who... I was really looking forward to because because Lamar wasn't at the open practice, obviously, because of the whole COVID thing. So I'm like, all right, Lamar ain't there. All right, that sucks. But we're going to see our boy Hollywood, man. We're going to see our boy Hollywood, seeing what he's doing out there. But he didn't practice on the Friday before. And I was hoping like, OK, they just said it's a minor leg injury. All right, cool. No problem. Hopefully he'll be back. Hopefully he'll be back on Saturday. He'll be at the open practice. But I was looking, Rashad Bateman and, and James Prochet, they got out to the field super early. And I was looking for a number five. I, I couldn't see it. I saw number 13, too, but I was still looking for that number five and couldn't see it. And, and it never showed up. And it came out. They said that uh, his leg injury that he had, they said it actually ended up being a hamstring injury that ended up being a lot more, or more serious than uh, they initially thought it was. And that scared me. And I'm not trying to scare any of y'all, but that scared me because we know how mum the Ravens are when it comes to injuries. We know how hush hush the Ravens are, specifically Harbaugh, when it comes to injuries. And I mean, Harbaugh speaks for the Ravens, so the Ravens. Uh, so when when they came out and said that it, it was it's more serious than they initially thought, I was like, oh, now I, I don't. I don't, I don't think it's going to be this super long-term thing, but you know with hamstrings, they can go from a week to a month. The hamstrings can just vary. The severity of a hamstring, it, it can be so different depending on the case of it. It can be so different. There's no exact hamstring injury where it's like, okay, it's going to be for this long. Okay, it's going to be for that long. No, it's not. I wish it was. I wish we had a, a clear, definitive answer of when Hollywood we would be back. But we don't. So this could be a day-to-day -day thing. He could show up any day now. But we just don't know. So it does, it sucks for Hollywood, first and foremost, um, that he's not out there with his boys. Uh, but it helps a lot of other receivers out. And it helps them out because a lot of receivers who are more toward the bottom of the depth, everybody moves up a, a spot. Everybody moves up a spot uh, on the depth chart for now. Uh, everybody gets that much more opportunities on the depth chart for now uh, with Hollywood being out because he is obviously one of the Ravens' premier receivers. Um, now, Miles Boykin. Miles Boykin, who has said to be having uh, a rough camp so far. Um, they said it's been a lot of ups and downs. Uh, I've been hearing about more downs than ups. I've uh, been hearing about drops, been hearing about some, some missed touchdowns. Um, just haven't really been hearing too, many, too much good about Miles Boykin so far. Now, again, it's still early. And hopefully for Miles Boykin's sake, with them having put the pads on today, um, when he, whenever he does come back, because he's out too. Um, but hopefully when he does come back, he can turn this thing on uh, because with Miles Boykin, um, it's, it's, an even, it's an even rougher situation for him because with Miles Boykin, he I don't know what the, the, the situation is with Miles Boykin right now. I'm very um, because I, I really do feel like he's fighting. Uh, it's, it's so weird because I, f I feel like he's fighting for a roster spot, but then at the same time, I feel like he's not fighting for one. I feel like he has it. It's just, it's really confusing, man. It's really confusing. Like, w what is the status of a Miles Boykin? I don't know. I really don't know. Um, and, and then I, I keep hearing people talk about to, to, to move him to tight end. No, 
I um I remember before I would think about that before I was like oh maybe maybe they could they could do that like a little Dan Waller thing but then now that I think about it no we we'll talk about that in a whole nother video but no don't move Miles Boykin to Titan um but anyway with Miles Boykin with him having a, a a rough camp so far and then he gets a hamstring injury and it's like oh man that's tough. That's re that's really tough, and that's so bad for Miles Boykin. The timing of it is just terrible. Again, hopefully with him too, though. Hopefully with him and Hollywood, they can both be back like tomorrow. That that would be a beautiful thing, man. That would be such a beautiful thing if we get a notification tomorrow morning at eight thirty. Said, oh, Hollywood return to practice. Oh, Miles Boykin return to practice. Be like, okay, let's go. But we'll see. Now another wide receiver who there's been so much talk about, especially since he beat Marlon Humphrey and everybody is going crazy, has been Rashad Bateman. But something that I've been noticing, hopefully this is just him getting back in the football shape because this is something that concerns me too. Uh, and it's Rashad Bateman. First round draft pick, Rashad Bateman. Uh, beautiful route runner. Got some underrated speed too. Um, he's going to do his thing. Uh, now, I, I have been seeing people say, oh, is he going to be the, the Justin Jefferson of the Ravens? No, no. Uh, the Ravens do not throw the ball as much, as, nearly as much as the Vikings do. Or not nearly as much as a lot of other teams do. Now, I do expect their throwing to uh, increase, but still, I, I don't expect them to completely change who they are, to completely be like, all right, we're going to be a throwing team now. Now, I want them to be able to throw, and have all these different options when it comes to the throwing game, but I don't expect them to completely change their game, if you get what I'm saying. But anyway, Rashad Bateman, um, something that I've been noticing with him is that there have been several practices where he just can't finish. He doesn't finish. He'll have little things here and there, little injuries here and there, minor stuff now, which is, is good. It's good that it's minor. We appreciate that because he came back to practice today. After missing practice yesterday and leaving the open practice on Saturday. Um, but I just I hope that this is just him having to get back in football shape after missing a big chunk uh, of last year. Um, so hopefully that's all that it is. And it's not a thing where he ends up being one of those players that always got to come out the game and whatnot. Always going to end up missing time and whatnot. Hopefully that's all it is. Um, but it's just something to keep an eye out for. Just something to watch and pay attention to. Um, who else? Uh, we, we, oh, we're also going to talk about the open practice. I know it, it happened way on Saturday, and today's already Tuesday. Um, but we're going to get that together uh, when we can for y'all. Just what we saw, our thoughts on things, um, and just some different clips and whatnot. It, it'd be something real simple. And shout out to Simple, Simply AS10. Uh, we were sitting with him uh, at the uh, the open practice. Super cool. Shout out to him and his roommates as well. Um, but yeah, man, these this Ravens receiver room. It's crazy because the one receiver from the Ravens that I have been worried about the most uh, with injury history is Sammy Watkins. And he's been the healthiest one. He's been the healthiest one. Um, but this is a, another reason why I really, two things, why I really wanted the Ravens to go all in at receiver this year. All in. Because one injury could change everything like that. One injury, it, it changes the entire dynamic of the wide receiver room like that. Instantly. Instantly. Um, but another thing, number two, uh, why I really wanted, uh, what I really want the Ravens to do this year, especially when it comes to their wide receivers, but just, and Greg Roman talked about it the other day. So, again, and I know a lot of y'all in that video in the comment section, y'all were saying, hey, seeing is believing. Y'all won't believe it till you see it. And I completely agree with that. I'm on the same boat. But with, um, with Greg Roman, he said that if a player does something well, we're going to find a way how to use that, how, how to bring the best out of them, how to use them to, to their strengths. It's time. It would be a perfect time to do that right now. Perfect time. 
So we'll see how that goes. Uh, but in the absences of uh, Hollywood Brown and uh, Miles Boykin, um, this gives Sammy Watkins his opportunities, of course, continue. Uh, Rashad Bateman's opportunities will, of course, continue. But this gives Devin Duvernay more of an opportunity. James Prochet, who has been the talk of the town recently. So he's been catching everything, except he did drop a punt on Saturday, but ain't no big deal. But he's been catching everything. He's been catching every pass, um, and he's been doing his thing so far. Um, and some people think that, hey, him showing out right now, that could be him just setting the Ravens up to trade him. I've been hearing a lot of that where people feel like, hey, this guy and the, and the Ravens have been putting him out there big time. They've been pushing James Prochet big time. They've been like, hey, James Prochet this, James Prochet that. They keep mentioning him, getting his name out there so people are hearing. They're like, oh, this James Prochet guy. Oh, he's nice. And I remember... Um, just a few years ago, when the Ravens were doing that exact same thing with somebody who Ravens fans knew wasn't a starter, not to say he couldn't play, because he can obviously play in the NFL, but a couple years back, the Ravens, during training camp, and then in preseason, they were pushing this name, they were like, oh, this guy, he's a projected starter, projected starter, he's so good, he's killing it in training camp, oh yeah, he's going to be one of the Ravens starters for sure, Ravens were saying this now. And that was um, Jermaine Elmanor. Jermaine Elmanor. They were pushing his. Y'all remember? They were pushing his name heavy. And then what did they do? They end up trading him. So I don't know what's gonna happen with James Prochet. Um, we'll see. But I hope he continues to do well, uh, especially now since the pads are on. Um, so anyway, team, keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. And, oh, it's going to be crazy, but just like it could be with either Miles Boykin or James Prochet at the end of preseason, I'm out. <laughs>